Let's talk with Chris Pyle, Director of Operations for RV Self Park, a new concept that's shaping the way and how RVers are traveling in the industry. I'm Alex Burkett, and this is the Outdoor Alliance's podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk with Chris about their first park location, expansion opportunities, and the franchise model. Yeah, and again, how this concept sure. could change the way that people build parks and the way that they travel. So why don't we walk through a little bit about you know your background and how you guys launched this concept? Back in 2019, um, he's been an RVer for a while now. Um, has a couple of different businesses that has him travel across America. So he's always been a transient traveler. Um, you know, we'll travel 350 miles a day if he has to just to get to that destination um and during that time you know he's stayed at the walmart parking lots he has had to stay at the cracker barrels and things like that um which ended up being more of a headache for him you know so i think it was july 2019 um is when he came to us the family and was like hey i have this idea we have this little plot of land in west sullivan um what do you think about it and at the time we were like, you know, obviously that sounds great. We didn't know um, how big, you know, and exciting it was going to be for other people in the industry. Um, it was just something that he thought other RVers could use coming down 44. Um, and so just a little bit about RV Self Park. Yeah, it's completely automated uh, parking facility for RVers. Um, we have, you know, full hookups at each site, water, electric, sewer, um, it's conveniently located right off of the highway. Um, that's really where RV Self Park wants to be. Um, as we said, we want it to be stress-free, convenient, all those good things. Um, we have high-speed Wi-Fi, of course. That is a big thing at the park right now. Um, and then, of course, it's well lit at night for those transient travelers who get in maybe 8, 9, 10. Usually, um, lights are low at the campgrounds, um, from my experience. And it's kind of hard, you know, doing that part, you know, getting um, all set up at nighttime when it's completely dark. So we make sure that everybody has, you know, enough light to see. And as I said, it's the convenience factor. What was the appeal of the way that you guys automated things? So a lot of owners that I talk with are like, yeah, we, we may be in a similar situation where they have, you know, a huge plot of land, but the opposite side of the spectrum, where it's like, oh, it's out in the middle of nowhere in the country where somebody could drive, you know, a long distance and stay at a destination location. And they want to have that personal interaction. But this is sort of a whole unique concept for, I would almost say, a whole different class of RVers, people who need a different solution. They end up having to stay at those campgrounds anyway because there is no other place to stay, as I said, unless you stay at a Walmart or you stay at a Cracker Barrel. You have to stay at those campgrounds that may be five miles off the highway um, at nighttime, as I said. So um, with this, as I said, we just want to be right off the highway. We want it to be convenient for people. The automation aspect of it is more, um, you know, our reservation system understands who's going to be at the park at what time specifically. So at any given time, let's say site 11 right now, if nobody's there, all utilities are locked. Nobody can get in there. Even if you pulled up and tried to plug in, electric won't work, can't access the sewer, won't be able to hook up to the water either. Um, because again, our automation, our system knows what's going on. So what someone does is just simply gets online, will you know, go to the reservation page, fill out the reservation page really quickly. Um, and then as I said, if you wanted to do site 11 at three o'clock today, you pull in, everything lights up for you, um, you have full access, um, and you actually also get to pick when your check-in and check-out time is. So if you want, we have 14-hour stays, 18-hour stays, and then full days, and then on and on from there. Um, and we've seen that the 14-hour stay is very, very popular uh, because most people get in, you know, maybe 6, 7, 8 o'clock, and they want to leave by 8 a.m. So, you know, just not having to pay for a full day for a lot of people has been convenient. Right, and that makes a lot of sense. I know one of the other questions that you know I had, at least when researching you guys in this this location, is sure. with the fully automated concept. People might have concerns yeah. around, you know, is the park safe? Is there somebody that I can go and talk to there if I do have problems and can't hook up? Yeah, a lot issue? of the reviews that we've gotten, a lot of people say um, they felt safe all night because they do have access to our cameras. Um, so if they hear a weird noise in the middle of the night and don't want to get up immediately and look out. They can just you know access the camera and see okay nothing's going on i just heard something different 
Um, so that's really the safety aspect. We have, as I said, cameras. So our customer service team at any given time can you know log into those cameras and make sure everything is fine. Yeah, and like you said, it's not like right. somebody's making a reservation and you know nobody's caring about this. There's a whole team behind the scenes that are helping illustrate all of this and make sure everything yeah. is good to go. So you still can have that that human touch right. point of somebody arranging the stay and facilitating that, but just maybe nobody on site that they're gonna you know get to talk sure. to right away, and it makes that really convenient. And I know a lot of people might not even want to talk with somebody when they pull into their site. It's a long day. They're Correct. exhausted. They've been traveling on the road the entire day. Dad just wants to go and set up and get to bed and get back on the road the next day. So I think it's a it's a unique way that that you're sort of appealing to younger consumers. And that's sort of what I wanted to ask you next is, you know, what's the type of traveler that you guys are, are seeing at this park? When it comes to who we're looking for, I guess, um, it is just going to be that transit traveler. Somebody needs to stop by and that, that's it. Well, and it, and it seems like too, with the model that you guys are trying to pioneer, it's mainly um, location-based targeting rather than trying sure. to say, you know, right. we're going to be this style of park and appeal to families with kids under five. And that's the exact person we're trying to look at. You're really just trying to pop up along, you know, parts of the country, and and we can talk about that next. These sort of expansion plans that you guys have, where somebody can just easily, you know, see the park and say, oh, hey, and I wonder if they have a, a site and, and pull in or set that up in advance and say, hey, this is a really good spot, you know, in the travel and trip planning where we can stop and stay for the night and then continue on that next sure. day. So what what is your guys's plans right now, expansion wise? Um, we personally um, are. We have a site in Kingsland, Georgia, which is right at the Florida Georgia line, um, in which we are going to build RV South Park number two. Um, that'll be a 34 site um, RV park there, conveniently located right off of 95. Um, tons of RV travel there. Every RV park around there is completely full. So we feel it's obviously gonna be um, a pretty good location. And as I said, there are a lot of transient travelers, you know, in that spot, in that location. And then when it comes to franchising, we um, do have a couple people that we are speaking to and it's moving forward. We are pretty open to anybody who is interested in partnering with us. I would say, ideally, the business partners that we're looking for when it comes to franchising, somebody who may already have a plot of land right off the highway, you know, water and sewer accessibility is obviously key, but those things won't keep us away from having a conversation with somebody. It's just, you know, with interest rates and things like that, buying land is a little bit harder, especially when it's right off the highway and that's that prime land. So in any kind of way we can have a partnership with someone is, is what we're looking for. And I imagine through through that franchising process, you guys are going to be there behind the scenes supporting all of this. And Us in the back end are going to be doing the things for them. When it comes to, let's say we were to partner with somebody in Texas and that Texas uh, franchisee owner, he wouldn't be getting the calls, right, for, for his park. We have a customer service call center is what we like to call it, that would field all the calls at any time. And if it needed to be escalated to that RV park owner, so be it. But again, usually, first of all, we don't get calls. We really don't because I'm actually the customer service rep right now. I'm the one who takes majority of the calls. And majority of the time, it's people calling about franchising. So luckily, people are figuring it out how to operate the park by themselves. But for that franchisee, it would be, I mean, I don't want to call it like an Airbnb, but it is pretty passive. You don't have to check in every day with every single guest. Our facility is extremely clean and we don't necessarily have someone on site all the time. That's going to be your service providers. Make sure that you hire the best ones around um, and that you can trust them to be the face of RV South Park when you're not necessarily there. So yeah, that's kind of the way it's all been set up. And so as far as franchising goes, is there any sort of, I know you mentioned sort of the, the land requirement being off the highway, but you know, a net worth requirement or, or something to sort of involve that conversation. If there may be, you know, even other RV owners or people who might have a park somewhere and say, hey, you know, this could be another park that we could potentially operate, but be more of a hands-off operation somewhere local. And well, basically kind of the way the process goes is we have a franchise inquiry link on our website. You fill all of that out. It's all the requirements and everything there. And then our franchise business consultant who is Cody Monte, he would actually reach out to you with an email and say, hey, you know, I just got your inquiry. We wanted to set up a call with you. And then he'd have an introductory introductory call with you and just kind of go over what RV South Park is, kind of what we're doing here, go a little bit more in detail, of course. And then from there, you'd send the proper documents over if you want to continue. And yeah, that's uh, again, just kind of how the process goes. And we, we would lay it all out for you. And yeah. 
And as you guys, as you mentioned, Chris, mentioned opening that second location in Georgia, are you changing anything from the first location in Missouri to where you are now? And we did give people more space in between, of course, because you can never have enough space, right? But then one more thing was making the turn radiuses maybe a little wider for people. We have found out that no matter how perfect you may seem, uh, you may think you made the park, you can take a 45 foot RV and put a trailer hitch on the back that's 20 foot and go through the whole thing and it's a-okay and then in the first week have somebody drag through the front yard because they don't know how to drive so um little little things like that um is what we decided to not change but adapt to what's going on at the west sullivan park really right and, and like you said it's just sort of uh yeah, you don't no know what type of rv traveler you're getting and what experience level they have so anything that's gonna sure excuse me make their experience easier is uh, is going to make it just that much more enjoyable in, in that journey to, to their next location. Talk a little bit, Chris, about, you know, sort of if if you could predict things and sort of from your guys' corner of the industry, you know, how do you think 2023 is going to go and where do you see this type of traveler play its role within the industry itself? I mean, obviously you guys believe in the concepts and are continuing to open more locations. West Sullivan, that location is not the prime location that we would require somebody to open an RV self park. It was just the land that Jim had available to see what this thing did, right? In 2023, you know, how are you, how are you seeing the market? And do you think that this type of consumer and the traveler who's staying at your guys' park locations, sure. that I think is different than a maybe traditional campground consumer going to a destination park. Exactly. Do you think that those type of travelers are going to continue? You know, more people are working from the road, more people are traveling yeah. with their families. I think I read that there were 70 million people planning on traveling in an RV this year. So um, we know we're going to get a good, uh, you know, um, a little bit of those people. And I meant to ask you this earlier, Chris, but can you, sure. for somebody who hasn't visited one of these, locations just walk through the process of somebody pulling into the park itself and what do they have to do to go from checking in to actually landing at that site itself i know that may be sort of scary for rv travelers to go well who do i talk to what do i do Uh, we actually you know recommend people go online first and make that reservation to make sure that your site is available first of all Uh, but if you were to just pull off the highway see rv self park sitting there yeah you pull in we have signs going all the way through that say hey stop here in the temporary parking if you don't have a reservation um, from there please you know scan this code it'll take you to the reservation site uh, create your reservation and it's honestly simple as that you just you see hey site 12 is open great let me go ahead and put that in i secured site 12 you go around the park you pull into site 12 and you're ready to go it's it's really that simple and sort of i would imagine same thing on the reverse yeah. when somebody checks out they just hook up get ready to go and leave and that confirmation it has any information that you would need kind of like the code to the trash bin because that is locked of course and you know wi-fi certain things like that what's around if you wanted to get food or fuel but yeah, honestly, it's it's we tried to make it as stress free and easy as possible with our traveling in mind. So um, it's really, really simple in our our eyes to check in and check out. This is not a park that has a ton of amenities and extra things to do. It's not designed for that sort of sort of travel. Right? And we are those travelers that literally just need a hookup so that I can sleep sound, I can turn the AC on or whatever needs to be, and then we're out in the morning. And we know that a lot of people travel that way. Not everybody is just leaving their house and going directly to whatever destination that they're at. They are, there's that in-between. And for those people, those in-between campgrounds, as I said, no offense to any campgrounds, uh, but they just might not be super convenient off the highway when, you know, it's dark outside or anything like that. So that is where RV Self Park came from. And from the other end, Chris, some things that I see in talking with RVers in the industry um, is people who are in the same position who would be a perfect customer for this type of concept are traveling through the day. They might have expected to make it to their destination right. during that day, but they, they got stopped, something happened, they got delayed in their trip, and they're going to have to stop a night early. And, and the amount of times that I hear, you know, I couldn't get a hold of the park. I called and called, and I saw somebody on my route. And I just couldn't ever, you know, reach them to even see if there was availability or I went online to their website and it sucked and I couldn't find a way to book online. They were call only, but nobody answered my phone. And then there are RVers out there who are almost stuck and saying, you know, we don't know 
where to stay. So I like the fact of how much technology is incorporated into this and where the owner can sure. just, you know, be traveling on the road and very quickly just say, oh, there's a site yeah. available. I'm going to book it and I can just travel the rest of my journey stress-free. Yeah. Well, if you schedule to stay with us at three o'clock, like I said, site 11, what you can actually do is if you were like, hey, I don't think we're going to make it by three o'clock. We're going to it's going to be five o'clock. Actually, in your confirmation email at the very bottom, you can either edit or extend your stay. Um, and it's simple as that. So if you needed to bump it to five o'clock, perfect. That's all you need to do. You go in there, you bump it to five o'clock, you click reserve, um, and it just updates the um, automation system so that it knows that, all right, now that person's supposed to be here at five. Um, and there's a 30 minute buffer prior to the actual start time. So if that person does arrive a little early, um, then everything still will come on for them. So. That's something that we implemented for, um, again, that ease and uh, stress-free part of RV Self Park. Right. And there's a lot of people who are doing that planning and trying to make sure totally. that, you know, even if it's just stop right. along the journey, people want to know that, you know, they've got a reservation and they've got that spot and they're going to be able to pull in and hook up and be able to use everything just like they think and not have to call and sit on the phone with you and figure out how to turn all that on and, you know, just make it so that they can pull in, sit down and be done. So I really, really like that. Chris, as we wrap up, where can people go to um, either learn more information about the franchising opportunities or if they're an sure. RV or listing, where can they go to actually, you know? Yeah, see? so for, like I said, there's a link there for the for people who are interested in a franchise. And then, of course, those um, just regular RVers who are interested in staying at an RV self park, all the information that you would need to know about us is there in our website. So you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram for any updates. Uh, both are RV self park. But yeah, we'll just be, you know, uh, exposing RV Cell Park a little bit more as it grows and, you know, telling everybody what we're doing and where we're going and what we plan on in the future. So we're excited. We're actually waiting on some permits to come back uh, for the wetlands area that we're in. So honestly, as soon as that's ready to go um, and we get the clear, we're putting, you know, a scooper to the ground and we're going. Chris, thanks for being here. Thanks for listening to the Outdoor Alliances podcast. I hope you enjoyed today's episode with Chris. Subscribe for more guest conversations and weekly marketing episodes on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll see you back here for more great information. I'll talk to you soon.